Mm, this conference started. will now be recorded. So I'm going to um, set the screen up and all that good stuff, and then I'm going to get started. So uh, hopefully everyone's had an awesome weekend. It's uh, Monday the 20th, so that's a good look for me. It's a, it's a really good look, actually. So let's see here. I want to make sure that um, everything is as it should be. All right. So I just clicked on share the screen. So that's live and active. Um, you know, the, today's call was going to be about, um, about well, it, it was going to be about uh, you know, like building your team, which is really important because I've had some some really good breakthroughs with that. But you know, something happened last night where um, when it occurred, it it really made me think. And so I, I went to bed somewhat late last night because I was working on on a project. And then I woke up about I don't know four o'clock this morning or something because it was it was too hot and. Excuse me. We had turned the the heater on earlier in the day, so and I just don't sleep well when it's just too hot. So, uh, long story short, I woke up about four o'clock or so, and then it's always difficult for me to go back to sleep. It's just the way it works for me. So, but I I had this 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 overwhelming thought while I was laying there in bed this morning um, trying to work my way back to sleep, um, which was, man, you know, I I, uh, I was watching as I was up working on this project, um, the 60-second uh, stand-up project that I have going on with my son while I was working on that, uploading videos to YouTube, I was... Um, uh, you know, the news was on in the background, but it was very low. I couldn't really hear it. But I happened to look up, and I happened to see that there was an article um, that they were going to have on this guy, um, Robert F. Smith, right? And um, Robert F. F. Smith, you know, funny enough, I, you know, I had never heard of this guy before uh, less than a year ago. I, I'm going to gonna say Eight months, six to eight months ago, um, I had never heard of this guy before, and and the thing that was so so uh, it, you know bizarre to me is that I had never heard of Robert uh, Robert F Smith, and Robert F Smith is purported to be um, the the wealthiest or one of the wealthiest for sure um, black men in this country. Okay. And me being a black man, I'm always, you know, like keen to hear about or know about, you know, black folks that are doing big things, right? I mean, you know, anybody that's doing big things, but black folks in particular because I'm a black man. And so Robert S. Smith, when I, you know, I was just doing my, you know, sometimes I just go through YouTube, right? And you know how we all get like caught in the YouTube, um, in the YouTube funnel, funnel, if you will. And you just start watching one video, and one video leads to another, so on and so forth. Well, just so happened this guy uh, pops up uh, in an interview, um, Robert F. Smith from uh, Vista Equity uh, Partners, and I'm I'm listening to to what they're saying about this guy, and I'm like, wow, really? You know, um, had a deal. Uh, you know, um, made, uh, I don't know what it was, I, I forgot, like one point some odd bill, like like $1.6 billion off of a bill that he had bought um, into with his partners for like $40 million, some kind of project, you know, some kind of technology. And then that technology was then subsequently bought from his firm and his piece of the action was like, you know, $1.6 billion or something. And what I found really interesting about this guy in his interview is that he was speaking a lot about, um, you know, the, the, the steps that you take in life, right? And, and the failures that, that, you know, we all have, you know? And the difference is, is that people with 
or have, uh, you know, with an understanding, I'm not going to say with money. So people with an, with an understanding understand that those failures that I've had plenty, plenty, plenty of are nothing more than, um, than lessons. You know, they're literally nothing more than lessons. You know, and I, I was, my mind was just racing this morning thinking about like like the the ton of failures that I've had in my life and and literally and I thought about this stuff before because of different things that different people have said but you know something about seeing this this Robert uh Robert F Smith guy on TV um giving away what the news channel said was about 40 million dollars he was giving away to um his to a school that he went to to a college that he went to and i i don't remember the exact college but it was a uh, uncf college right and i i want to say it was morehouse so basically he was doing the commencement speech at morehouse and uh, if it was Morehouse, right? And so he was doing the commencement speech. And as part of that commencement speech, you know, um, for all these graduating uh, young men, he said, I'm going to pay all you all's um, debts off, all of your your students, all your school debts. He's just going to pay them off. And I just, that just hit me so profoundly that this man takes his wealth and does something like that, right? And then they had, they had also mentioned that not only had he done that, but he also um, had previously given the college months ago um, $1.5 million, you know, just directly to the school. And now he was going to invest in these other individuals um, by paying off all of their student debt, all of their student loans. He was literally just going to pay it off, which was, once again, estimated by the uh, Channel 11 News here in Southern California um, to be $40 million. And, I mean, that that was very profound to me because – what started clicking in my head was, excuse me, was listening to his um, to his videos uh, that I saw on YouTube, or the you know interviews and questions being asked of him, <laughs> and listening to his his life story, if you will, um, or parts of it anyway, and and thinking to myself, damn, you know, I mean, this man started off just no different than than anybody on this phone call right i mean he was he had a he had a, a tenacity about himself obviously he had um a uh, a desire to succeed obviously but his initial desires to succeed started in jobs right so it wasn't like it wasn't like he was like you know knocking down the doors in entrepreneurialism at 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, or whatever the case may be, you know, he was, he was elevating himself in jobs, in jobs, in that, you know, he started off at, at Bell Labs, and, and then, you know, first he started with, as an intern, and then he got a job, and yada, yada, yada. But my point is, is that his story is so average, right, except for several things. His story is your story. His story is my story, except for several things. And my takeaway from his different, you know, from the different clips that I've seen and, and, and interviews and questions being asked of him is that, you know, the difference for him and probably the difference that I see for, for people like Warren Buffett, people like Michael Jordan, people, you know, on and on and on, is that how they look at their what other others of us would consider to be failure and it's it's kind of funny right because you know i myself um 
even though I know better because I've heard it a bazillion times, you know, hey, dude, your failures are, are just learning lessons. But but they, you know, these other people have made it a part of themselves that their failures are not failures. Their failures are lessons in the process, right? So in this process of our existence, in this process of our life, um, their the failures are literally no more than just that. But, you know, in my own life, I can tell you that when I lost everything, when I lost everything, um, and, uh, you know, this is, I don't know, um, crap, I just, it's been a while now. So um, I'm going to say 2010, I, you know, I was like flat, broke, busted, and disgusted. Um, 2010, I, I would say when I was, when I was hit the hardest, I think. Um, and I had just like lost literally, you know, everything. I mean, it was to the point where, you know, my, my father would bring groceries over to my place. <clears throat> you know, he'd go shopping at the, at the BX, at the base commissary. And then, um, he would, you know, bring stuff over to my house, right? And which was, you know, I'm very thankful that I had a father that would do that for me. Um, but just lost every damn thing. And and I was, I went into a, a depression, into a funk, you know? And I kind of just like, like lived in that for far longer than I should have. Um, when I should have, you know, in, in you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? But what I should have done back then was, you know, go through go through a time of healing, but then get my fat ass up and start moving forward again. But I did not, right? I let myself kind of live in that, and I didn't take my experiences, right, which which a lot of us look at as, as being failures, and put those experiences to use to rebuild myself in a much faster um at a much faster pace because I had those negative experiences that were literally my university. Right. And so what I have what I started thinking about is all these different people, um, like I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, I was listening to Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. I, I've mentioned this before on other calls, but I was listening to Warren Buffett and Bill Gates talk and you know, Warren Buffett had made a comment that if you get into, if, you know, if the stock market is your thing and you get into the stock market and you fail um, um, 20 times, but you get, you get that one, like the 21st time, is, I'm paraphrasing this, so, you know, look it up for yourself so you, you get the, exactly what he said. But if, if you win just that, that 21st time on every 20 failures, and you are consistent, you'll get rich. Those are Warren Buffett's words, right? And, and so obviously, I think he knows what he's talking about. Um, there's a, um, um, a thing that I looked up this morning, you know, specifically for this call for you all, and it's a, um, it's a, it's a quote uh, by Michael Jordan, and it, it's really kind of awesome, you know, and I, I had heard this before, and I, I just really wanted you all to hear it again, because I think it's, it, I think it's important, right? Because, you know, so many of the people on this call, and so many of the people that will listen to this recording later, you know, always think of Michael Jordan just on that one side, you know, that, that in some people's opinion, um, the greatest basketball player ever, but they forget what it took to become the greatest basketball player ever. So, um, you know, here's a, a quote by Michael Jordan. It says, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've trusted, I've, I'm sorry, 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and miss. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. That's why I succeed. I mean, dude, isn't that like powerful? This cat is telling you just, and once again, you know, to a lot of people, 
you know, Michael Jordan is like, like, you know, like the, like the greatest, you know, basketball player ever. I'm not really a sports fan, so I could care less. But the facts are that, you know, this dude is telling you, you know, he has, he has literally missed 9,000 shots. I mean, he's, 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 he's failed over and over and over. And that's the key phrasing, right? Is that he has failed over and over and over and over his words, right? Um, in his life. And that's why I succeed. And so, you know, we have to start reevaluating and, and rethinking our, our thought process on what is failure in, 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 in all sincerity. Um, you know, I'll use myself as an example. You know, let me tell you something. The reason I can sit my fat butt at home right now is because I have learned how to make money because of my failures. The reason I can I can generate, you know, uh, what I would consider to be a fair amount of money without having to leave my little spot, right, and and literally sit my fat butt. Um, in the corner of my sofa with my um, laptop in front of me and my um, cell phones is is literally because of my failure. So, you know, in in real terms, I never would have thought about credit repair and um, back in the day if if my personal credit weren't screwed up and I could not afford to have anybody fix it. Does that make sense? I, I, I just wouldn't have thought of credit repair. Um, it just wasn't a thing for me uh, because, you know, I just, my credit was either nothing and then when it became something, um, I just, I was cool with it, you know, but when I went ass backwards, then, then that's when it became a thing for me and I had to learn how to repair my own credit, which then subsequently led to me when things went bad, when things went completely, uh, you know, just jacked up, that's what led to me being able to um, start selling it as a thing, right? I mean, you know, helping other people get their credit right. If if I had not, um, uh, you know, uh, bought or read a bunch of information from from different people, on on how to you know build business credit and then screw it up royally, um, you know I would not be in the business today of being able to sell it to people for five grand, which is one of the reasons that I'm able to sit in my in my sofa all day long, which I really got to stop doing because it's it's just too much. It's just, it gives you it's maddening being in your house all day. Um, but the point is is that it, I do have the flexibility to leave my house. And if I have my cell phone on me, I can answer my phone and potentially make a deal with somebody, which will put money in my pocket, you know? Like, so my wife works outside of the house, and with one deal, I can make more than she's made for her whole, you know, whatever it is, seven, eight hours outside of the house working at a job. One deal. I can make more than she made in eight hours. And then in some instances, you know, I, I, in one deal, I will make more than she's made for the month. And, and, you know, the reason that is possible is because of my failures. Does that, are you guys catching that? The reason that it's possible is because of my failures. So are they really failures? Or are they just things that just didn't go the way that I had anticipated them to go? And so I'm thinking that, that you know we're taught wrong i'm thinking that that you know people at a higher level of performance be it in basketball be it in business um what have you look at things differently so i started this morning i i took a moment and i started listening to one of the interviews um with uh robert f smith because obviously i know i'm going to do this call and He's at this church, and you know he's talking about how his his um, um, his fund, right, 
which is uh, Vista Equity Partners, um, has given away something like, um, um, once again, I'm, I'm, I don't remember the exact number, but it was something like a hundred and thirty six million dollars so far a hundred and thirty six million dollars to his community right and in his community um is you know to to various colleges to um uh cancer uh, research to you know all these varied things but he's he's given away a hundred and thirty six million dollars and one of the things that he says in this talk, and you guys, I'm telling you guys, you need to listen to it. Um, and because it was done in the church, they also gave out some other inter interesting statistics, and which I'll give to you momentarily. But one of the things that, um, you know, I, I found so interesting is that, you know, he was saying that there was a, there was a firm that, you know, in, invests in the investment equity companies like his own, but um, and he really desperately wanted this company uh, to come on board and invest with him. And, and the deal was that they just wouldn't do it. And, you know, now that they've had, that he's had such great success that this company is like all on board trying to, you know, get involved with him, so on and so forth, which we all know that that's how things work, right? But, you know, the thing is, he's like, um, even though, even though he was desperate for them to come on board back in the day, and that did not work out, he's so happy that it didn't because his words, right, is that just because you put it out in the universe that you want, you know, nice, loud, and clear, you put your intention out into the universe, and then you take action on that intention, you know, and we've talked about this before, taking action on your intention, because manifestation is the first step. Manifesting the idea and putting that idea out into the universe is step one, but then creation is step two. So, same same thing that he's saying, but just in his verbiage. And so in his verbiage, it is, you are enough right here, right now, which we've talked about in the past. We literally have everything we need. You put action towards your intention. So what is your intention? You put that out in the universe, put action towards it. Because, it, because intention without action means nothing. You know, stating what you want and your desire um, out into the universe and not doing anything about it, you're not going to get anything. But what he was saying is this, and this is very key to our conversation here. Things don't always work out. This company that he was trying to get on board with him did not work out. Things don't work out. Things go awry. Things go ass backwards sometimes. But the deal is, so what? So what? You keep your intention and your actions moving in the direction that you have stated, right? So you keep your intentions and your direction in, in I'm sorry, your attention and your act, attention and actions towards the direction that you stated. And even if things don't work out, then it just wasn't for you, right? That thing. So like when I, you know, created, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars in credit cards and I lost all those credit cards, they all went bad. You know what? It was not because I was doing something wrong um, with the credit cards that it went bad. I was just a bad steward of my money. And so does that, does that make sense? I was I, Pascal Dominique Mansell, was a bad steward of his money. Um, when I was uh, pulling hundreds of thousands of dollars out of my properties back in the day and, you know, not doing what I should have been doing with the money, eh, you know what? I lost it all. And and so, therefore, what I was doing was good, but I was, once again, a bad steward of my money, right? And so, if you're a bad steward of your money, you're just gonna, it's just going to come to you and it's going to leave you. But, but, 
those negatives, those those mistakes, those whatever you want to call them, you know, those failures literally have placed me in a position today where I don't have to leave my house to earn my living. Are you guys getting that? And I have made more money from my house without, from my home, I should say, from my home without leaving it than I ever made with the credit cards or with with the properties back in the day. Are you guys grasping that? So those mistakes, those failures weren't failures at all. I mean, I perceived them to be failures. I beat myself up over that bullshit. I literally beat myself up so much mentally over that that it, it, it literally paralyzed me from moving forward. It literally paralyzed me. I mean, you guys think that, that you know, like, no, my, I, I literally laid across my, my sofa back in the day and I just ate. I just ate. Right? That's all I would do. I mean, I was, I was just, you know, stuck. I was stuck in this funk in, in basically a state of depression because I allowed my learnings, my, 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 my lessons, if you were, if you will, to become failures in my mind as opposed to what they truly were, which are life lessons. Are you, are you guys getting that? I mean, I, I was, I was so silly and just not understanding that those things that I was going through were life lessons, not failures. So every time that I have said something as stupid as, um, man, I would be okay right now, right? This is what I used to say a lot. I'd be okay right now if all those people I gave money to would just give me my damn money back, right? At least I'd have, you know, a good ten, twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars if those people that I gave money to would just give me my money back, you know, all those deadbeat ass people. I would just be okay. I would, I would be so much better off if they just gave me money. Not true. I That money that I gave out, that money is gone. It's gone. But the lessons that I learned from that are invaluable. Those lessons that I learned from that, even though instead of I didn't learn the lesson at $1,000 giving it out, it took me maybe $50,000 of giving money out to learn the lesson that ah, that's not something you should do. Some people learn faster. Some people learn that, you know, you give out $1,000, it doesn't come back to you. You got to stop, right? It took me a lot more. It took me um, screwing up you know, almost $400,000 in credit to understand this is just in credit cards, not all the other credits that I had, just in credit cards alone, you know. It took me screwing that up to understand that without a without a plan of action, my dumb bet doesn't need $400,000 in credit cards. So was that a failure or was that a was that a, just an expensive learning lesson? You know, so nowadays I look at it as an expensive learning lesson. It just took me longer than what it might take you. It took me longer than what it takes, you know, some other people. And then other people might might have to screw up even more than I did to to understand that it's not it's not a failure. It's just a lesson. It's just a learn. You know, this is something that we that we went through that we put ourselves through, but. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if your focus and your intention are in the same direction, then you will win. I hope you guys are really, this is like so freaking important. And, you know, that's why I changed my whole call because I was, I was going to talk about, you know, getting your team, which is, oh, my God, it's a good call, right? Getting your team right. Is a is a really good call. And I'm even going to touch on that in a little bit. But this was so important to me 
um, that it had me up at four o'clock this morning, just thinking all this stuff through and thinking about how many times I've been told what I'm saying to you all in so many, you know, in, in different ways, but it's, it's been, it's been told to me in the past, you know, but I would, I would still find myself, um, uh, you know, just like living in my failure as opposed to understanding what my failure, what other people consider to be failure, including myself, um, was not failure at all. It just is. You know what I mean? So the universe is always in neutral, right? The, it, the, the, all that other stuff that people add to it. But the universe is in neutral. It's, it's, it's our perception of things. Do, do, you guys, do you guys catch that? It's our perception of things. And so, you know, I would perceive things to be a certain way, like like failure. But I'm telling you all, and I, I'm going to keep on saying this crap, so if you don't want to hear it anymore, get off the call. But your failures, my failures, are not failures. The things that, that we've done that have gone awry, not in the direction that we wanted them to, so what? No one cares. You shouldn't care either. If you went bankrupt, you know what? So what? You know how many people that, that we've helped um, with, with our coaching to, to subsequently take a bankruptcy and, and either be able to get it off or just start rebuilding their credit regardless? You know how many people don't understand that 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 you know you could file bankruptcy today and in two years from now go out and get a mortgage. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, my failures have taught me so much that I'm able to take that knowledge and then subsequently sell that knowledge to the next person. So my failures, without those failures. I would not be where I am right now. And I'm, excuse me, I'm not saying that, that I'm, I'm, you know, where I want to be and, you know, all this other crap. I'm not saying that I've reached my goal. I'm still in, on my journey. I'm still going down my path. So, I, you know, I don't want you guys to ever think that I'm, you know, I'm trying to sit up here and say I've made it. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. But I can tell you that those those so-called failures that I've had have allowed me to set myself up in a certain way that 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 you know of course I have stressors like like we all have stressors but I can do things differently and I can do things in a manner that suit me. You know, I, I one of the things I I used to say back in the day, man, if I can just work from home and make money from home and just you know basically work online. This is you know back in the day when online was a thing. You know, I mean, people. Are, I'm sorry, it's still a thing. But when online was like, you know, I, I used to buy all these marketer stuff, and they were like, oh, you know, I'm making five million dollars from home, and I used to think, oh my God, if I could just do that, right? If I could just not talk to people other than over the phone or have them buy from my websites and all that kind of stuff. Well, all those so-called failures uh, and, but my desire to create that, 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 that action, right. So that I could sit at home and make money over my phone, over my, over the, um, over my laptop, my, the internet, you know, all those things have come to fruition because that has, that was something that, I placed deep into my subconscious, and lo and behold, it's come to fruition, right? So the only thing I, I, I think where I, I messed up is, is I didn't put a figure to it, you know? <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Um, but I didn't put a figure to it. I didn't, you know, I, I maybe should have said, now I need to be able to sit at home and make $20 million a year, you know, but so what? I, I do okay. Are you guys getting this? I'm, I'm really hoping. I'm truly, truly hoping that you are. But so I'm telling you all, I'm giving you guys permission to give yourselves permission to 
forgive yourself for your failures. All right? So Pascal is saying you have permission to give yourself permission to forgive yourself for your failures and understand that people that are operating on a higher level financially and in this world in general have failed far more times than you have. And the reason that they are successful or, you know, doing extremely well, at least financially in this world, is because they have failed, taken those failures, and then subsequently used those as a learning lesson or as a tool to move forward, right? This Robert F. Smith guy, please go to YouTube, find him, listen to him. He speaks very clearly. Very plain English, nothing, you know, all, you know, above above our pay grade type of thing. Just very, just down to earth sounding kind of cat to me. And I, I think it's imperative that we take these lessons, man. Um, if this guy's telling you that, you know, uh, he has gone through many steps, many trials and tribulations, a whole lot of BS for him to be who he is and to get where he's at. You know, to be at, at, a, at a height in his industry. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not going to say at the pinnacle, but, at, at you know, he's definitely far up the mountain, right? And for him to get there, He's had a lot of stresses and stripes and a lot of failures. A lot of a lot of people like this company he was talking about that he desperately wanted them to invest in him and they would not. Um, you know, uh, he said that he's better off for them not investing. But I mean, what a hard blow, right? For you know, for you to be desperate for someone to invest in you, and you thinking that you need them desperately, and the facts are that you don't. The facts are that it just wasn't for him, right? So, you know, he might have looked at that as, as a failure, but apparently only for a moment, where, where we, since we're operating at a different level, right, our belief system, uh, operating at a different level, might have taken it to be like a sign to go sit down somewhere, which I have done personally. And I'm sure people on this call have done it. And so we have to no longer allow ourselves to, you know, to take a rejection or a failure or any negative thing that occurs in our personal or business or social life and allow that to be something that haunts us and and, and, uh, and something that we use to beat ourselves up over. Because believe it, you know, the world is going to try to throw a lot of crap at you. And if we're adding to what the world's already throwing at us, we're done. Right? And I'm telling you this because these are things that I have gone through and go through. You know, I'm not there yet, but I know it's the true pathway. I'm nowhere near um operating on the level of this Robert S. Smith. I'm nowhere near op um, operating on the level of uh, uh, Michael Jordan, which we were talking about earlier. I'm nowhere near operating on the level of um, shit. a lot of these folks, you know. Um, nowhere near it. But I'm I'm starting to understand, and I, and I do mean starting, to understand that my failures are not failures. Your failures are not failures. It's it's only the perception that we have of what has occurred, and so we have to we have to if we're going to start succeeding and really just knocking down these walls and really just you know climbing that mountain so to speak in in rapid fashion, then we we have to a be focused. We have to understand that that you are right here right now everything that you need to get where you need to be. That you have literally everything that you need to get to where you need to be. It's been proven 
over and over and over and over again. But we allow these these incorrect things that are taught to people at our levels, right? And believe me, you, people are teaching us stuff that people on the higher in the higher echelons are not learning, right? We as the masses learn stuff that's utter BS, where people that are at the higher echelon, um, they don't get this crap. They don't, you know, they are told at, at, at early ages, you know, it's just a thing, right? You know, you listen to people, when I'm going to bring up Michael Jordan again, um, and I read you his quote, right, about, you know, missing 9,000 shots, you know, um, 300 times the ball had been given to him and, you know, for, for a game winning shot and he just, and he blew it. Right. But, but people like Michael Jordan, people like, you know, whomever this uh, Robert F. Smith, they understand that to become the greatest, to become the best at something, whatever it may be, you are going to have a shitload of, of, of failures along the way. But those failures, right, just like mine, and I'm sure a lot of you on this call, those failures are what allow us to learn and then subsequently improve so that, you know, it, it, that we're able to get to where we are right here, right now, today. And a lot of us might think, well, that's nothing. I'm not anywhere special today. But you are. You are somewhere special today. You really, truly are. And, and you know how I can say that with so much confidence? Because you're here today, right? You have, obviously, a phone in your hand. That's a big thing. A lot of people can't afford a cell phone. A lot of people can't, don't have an office phone that they're listening to this call on. It's a big thing. So whatever happened, you are where you are today. It's a big thing. You, you got up. That's a big thing. That's tremendous. Are we, all, are we all understanding this? So all that crap that has happened to you, you know, awesome, positive, good stuff. All those failures that I've had in my existence, awesome, positive, good stuff. Because it has literally placed me where I'm sitting on my sofa because far too often I am. Um, I got to change that. <laughs> but I'm sitting on my sofa. I'm talking to you all on the phone. I have my laptop sitting in front of me on one of these little portable dining table things. Um, I can't even think of the name of the stupid thing. But you know what I'm talking about, the little fold out tables that you can eat on. So I have my laptop sitting on that. And, you know, other than going to the park and walking in the morning and, and showering up and, you know, uh, running a couple little errands, you know, I'm able to be at home just doing me. And I would not be here doing me and making what I would consider to be a, a decent living um, if I had not had those failures, right? And And, you know, let me say this. And because of those failures, it has also helped me expand my vision. It has helped me expand my overall mindset on things, right? Um, that, you know, I'm, I am truly not, I have everything I need that which is, believe me, is very true. But it has also helped me expand my vision and my mindset um, because of my, because of those, you know, quote unquote failures, the so-called failures. I've been able to expand my mindset and and see that I am I am truly not an island unto myself. I need other people to do bigger and better things. Everybody that you listen to that that is successful in some arena, they will they will ultimately talk about their team that surrounds them, and that was really what the call was going to be about today. But as I already mentioned to you all, um, after seeing this guy that I had watched on YouTube months and months and months ago, 
you know, giving away $40 million. Um, and then, uh, you know, I mean, realistically, you know, $41.5 million um, to the school and then and subsequently paying off this whole graduating class's um, school debt. It just made me think about the things he was talking about with, with failing. And so, and you know, things not going right, his struggles, his strife. And it just made me, it just, oh my God, it just kind of like, like had this thing on me, you know, it was like, it was like a monkey on my back. I couldn't go to sleep this morning. Um, and I just wanted to impart that to you all, right? So we, you, me, you know, let's get over whatever, whatever negative BS that we've been told about how we should be or who we are, um, about, about how we're failures, how, you know, we've started 15 gazillion businesses and none of them has worked right, all this other crap that, you know, people like to put on us, right? They're failures, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I get excited about this. You know, most people that tell you that you, that you aren't crap, and that that you you can't succeed, or that you know why are you doing something else? You know why they tell you that is because they feel that in themselves. They have failed themselves. They are failures to themselves. And so, as we know, you know misery loves company. And so, those individuals that tell you that that you know, oh, here you go again, starting something new, doing something different, whatever the case may be. Screw those people. I don't care who they are in your life. Family, friends, whoever, they're not for you. You are for you. Understand that. Understand all your failings, all those businesses that haven't worked don't mean a thing. Those are your lessons. That's your university. And that's what you need to take away from this call. Your failures are not failures. Your failures, just like my failures, are our are, are university. That's our learning. That's what's going to make us far greater than where we are today. And key, though, key, 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 is you have to have focus. You have to have a vision. You have to speak it out loud to the universe what direction you're going in. And then what's the other part of that is just being true to that. Being true to it and understanding that, you know, whether it was Microsoft or Facebook, neither one of them started off to be what they are today. Neither one of them. If if you've watched anything on Microsoft or anything on Facebook, Facebook is is literally 180 degrees from what it started off to be. But as it was going and growing, they had to make changes. Right? It wasn't a straight line. And so you have to understand that for your business, your life, your existence, it's not going to be a straight line. But you have to have an intent, a focus, and then subsequently action. Intent, focus, and action. You have to have it. That's it. I mean, so I, let, me, let me just say a couple little quick things, though about what the call was going to be about. The call was going to be about, um, you know, one of the things that I have seen is that, you know, it's, it's man, you could do so much on your own. You could just, I mean, you could rock the world on your own. There's no doubt about that. But to truly expand yourself to truly, you know, bring your vision into fruition, you know, don't be shy about bringing other people into your vision. So I'm, and I'm going to give you an example of that, and, and we're almost at the end of this call, so I'm going to give you a quick example. You all have heard me mention um, my, my business that I started with my son, and I started so I could do something, you know, with my baby boy, right, who's a grown-ass man. But he's still my baby, right? So um, I, I wanted to do something with him, so I started this thing called 60 Second Entertainment. And, you know, our first foray under 60 Second Entertainment is called 60 Second Stand Up. Um, and you guys can look it up. We're just totally starting to build. But, you know, my son's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. And so to expand the vision, 
you know, I had to bring other people into the vision, you know, not as partners or anything of that nature, but you got to pay people, right? You know, people that are good at what they do. So, you know, I, I told you all I went to this conference, met this young lady named Lila. Um, and then she subsequently introduced me to a guy named Johnny. They're both in the, uh, in the, you know, they perform, um, at comedy clubs in LA. Um, long story short, you know, Lila fell off. Johnny is, is with it. I made an agreement with him, a deal with him. And by making that agreement with him and subsequently paying him and, and you know, sharing in the love, so to speak, in the financial love, you know, um, my, this little thing that we were having a very difficult time getting, uh, submissions into our, um, uh, into our YouTube platforms and then subsequently Instagram, Facebook and all the other platforms that were on. I was having a hard time getting submissions. My son got somebody, I got somebody to submit their videos. But this Johnny guy, because he's in that arena, you know, he has helped us grow, um, I think it's 400%. 400%. And I wouldn't have been able to do that as quickly as he because he's in that arena. I mean, he's out there going to comedy shows, doing stand-up comedy himself. And so this guy, knowing their language, right, you know, to how to speak to another comic, was able to present my ideas, my thoughts, in a way that would suit them. And then subsequently, he, we've, we've, our submissions have grown, as I just mentioned, 400%. And what's funny about that is, is even though we met a few weeks back, he wasn't able to start working on it until just recently, and just in the in the time of a week, less than a week, quite honestly, and a, but let's just call it a week. He's been able to help me get 400 percent growth in our submissions for 60 second stand up. How phenomenal is that, right? So, you know, I'm I'm saying this to you all because I want you all to know that. Um, People, whether they want to admit to it or not, their growth doesn't come just because of them. Um, you know, Michael Jordan, no matter how great he is, no matter how many shots he took and missed and subsequently, but he would not have been able to do jack if he was on that court by himself, right? Um, the same thing with this gentleman, uh, Mr. Robert F. Smith. If it wasn't for his family, because he talks about that, and if it wasn't for his family, um, you know, and the support that they gave him and then subsequently the team of people that he built along the way. And believe me, there's gonna be some people that fall off. Um, but if it wasn't for the for the for the team that he built along the way, you know, he would not have been able to accomplish what he did or what he has and what he's still going with. The same thing with Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett might read every day, like he says, out of for however many newspapers he reads every day, um, you know, no computers, none of that stuff, just the newspapers. Uh, but beyond that, if he didn't have a team, Warren Buffett would not be Warren Buffett. Just wouldn't happen. And so we have to understand that in our process and our in our steps moving forward, you know, you know, start to develop your team, develop your team, and believe me. You're going to have, you know, churn in that team, but then you're going to get to a point where you have people that, you know, you're going to find um, are good for you. And, you know, so I found Joy, um, who I believe is good for me. And so we start off with one agreement, but I believe she's so good for me that I keep on increasing. She doesn't ask for shit, but I keep on increasing what I give her a, a part of my businesses, right? Or part of the things that I'm doing. You know, she hasn't asked for anything, but I, I'm like, hey, Joy, I'm raising my prices on um, on credit repair. So instead of you making $750, now you're going to make $1,000 on the deal, right? Hey, Joy, uh, even though you don't really do anything with my uh, business credit building program, I'm going to start giving you X amount of percent of that. You know why? Because I want her to stay with me. 
over the long term because she is such a brilliant young woman, she's going to help me make more money. And so even though, you know, the business credit thing, eh, I was doing it myself. But why not give her a percent of that and then have her help me with it? It makes sense, right? Build your team along the way, y'all. Build your team. It's going to help you immensely. And and I'm telling you, by doing that, it's, it takes some of the burden off of you, some of the stressors, and allows you to grow because now, instead of you thinking that you have to do it all, now you have somebody that you can, you know, delegate some of the responsibility to. So much better. So much better because it is going to ultimately allow me to make even more money because I don't have to concern myself with saying, oh, my God, I'm going to be stuck. I can't do that many people by myself. I can't deal with that many people by myself. Now I can say, eh, here you go. I need your help on this one. Yeah, I need you to you know, talk to these people. I'm, I'm giving them your number. Does that make sense? That team. You're going to find some people that are just going to be crap along the way, but you got to go through those crap ones to get to the joys. You got to go through those crap ones to get to. Um, I got uh, this 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 lovely couple that I've known for a long time. My man Franco, he's probably on the call. You know, good human being. You know, he's brought me a lot of money, right? And so subsequently, I'm like, hey, dude, thank you so much. Let me let me compensate you. And do it legitimately. Do it honestly, right? Find a team. Find people that, that like what you're talking about, that are willing to work with you. And you know what's even cooler is that now it's like you, you have your basic, your idea, but now you have these other people feeding into your idea with their ideas on how to improve your stuff. And it's just like, damn, how much better can it get? So, anywho, if if anyone has anything to ask or say, now's the time to do it. Because other than that, I'm gonna end this call, and I really want to thank What's everybody up, for coming on the call. Hi. Hi, it's Doctor B. How are you doing? Doctor, how are you? I am here. I just want to say that, but I wanted to add: Can I interject on your word failure? Yeah, absolutely. This okay, is not my so, call. This is our call, y'all. Okay. So the word failure is only feedback. So when you say you're swimming in failure, no, you're you're swimming in feedback. It's just as if you take a letter and you send it out and you're waiting for a response. So when the response comes back and the letter doesn't say, okay, you're approved or you're disapproved, it's only feedback. It's coming back to feed you information so that you can get on another path or so that you can get the information in a different uh, prospect or a different manner. So failure is only feedback. And society doesn't teach that failure is feedback. They teach it as if it's a hammer and a nail. And they nail you to the coffin of failure, which blinds and traumatizes and blocks you where you can't move. And it's meant to do that. A lot of words that are used are meant to do just that. But if you can perceive and see, or if we can just perceive and see that failure is not failure, it's feedback. So if you're swimming in a lot of feedback, stop and read your mail. Stop and take the time to examine what is it really saying? Because the nuggets, and the gold chips and everything is in that feedback. And it's actually a stepping stone to a greater level and to a different direction. So feedback is meant to be educational because that's why our kids go to school. Uh, that's why we're still in school. Because feedback 
helps us move forward. You can't move forward or pay it forward when you're in a place of failure. And so when, when the word failure comes out, it's like mentally and emotionally, it traumatizes. And it's like every time the word failure is said, there's another nail going in. Absolutely. Words are so words are so profound and so powerful. That's why different languages have a different meaning for different things. Like in um the Chinese and Japanese culture, um emergency is interpreted opportunity. So oh, that's interesting. This perception of emergency um, has been taught and given that there is a trauma going on. And on the other side of the country, those words are like, ah, it's time. And even when they say, uh, so what does that mean? Well, in that culture, they say, ah, so they got a revelation. So words are so profound. And they have, they can either make a perception or break a perception. So I'm here to break a perception of failure. It is not failure. It is only feedback. It is your mail that's coming in to give you exclusive information on the direction you're going or the direction you need to go. It comes with a pointer finger to say, okay, the the mail went out this way, but it came back in this way. So it's pointing you to a direction. That's all. Absolutely. I like that. I'm a, actually I'm a, I'm a, with your permission. I'm a ball that. And awesome. <laughs> so let me let me let me, uh, Doctor Barbara, since you 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 you're speaking, I want to ask you: Do you can you think? of a time where you had like tremendous failure that then subsequently helped you um, create something bigger and better? Absolutely. Um, I had, well, I had several facilities, but uh, one in particular, when I learned that it's feedback and it's, that's, that's the word that came and overtaken it. Um, I, I I'm, I'm sorry. Let me let me ask you one thing. And I, I hate to interrupt. I really do. But when you say facilities, you're talking about what type of facilities? No, I'm talking about uh, care facilities, senior facilities, okay. DD care facilities. So this particular facility was one of my senior care facilities, and um, I remember just just as plain that uh, the way I came into it was all God number one. And number two, when I got into it, I had all of these warfares that came against me. Um, and what I mean by that is, is that I had, <laughs> I had every agency in the freaking world that I, that I never knew about that I all, all of a sudden now I know about all these agencies, the fire department, the ombudsman, the health department, the um, the seniors' relations, I didn't know about all of these things because why? I've worked in a hospital for years and years, but it's not the same as a home facility. We had a 24 bed, which housed 48 people, and um, I didn't know all this stuff. Well, when all these agencies start coming in and citing and, and putting information, I understand I only had the business maybe six months. And, uh, and in six months, I had all these different agencies, but I had taken it over from someone else who had left it in really bad shape. So when I went in, I had to go in running so that I could put everything together. And so I could set it up in a format that, you know, all of these um, penalties and, and all of these uh, documents that they would bring that something was always wrong. And, and, and I was like, oh my God, this is too much. This is too much. Well, I, I had this time that I had gone, set out at the beach. Uh, the water helps me a lot. 
even when it's cold. And I went out and I sat out there and I just prayed and I thought, I said, Lord, you got to give me information. You got to show me what it is. And the first thing that came to me was, you are not a failure. And I was like, I'm not a failure. No, I'm not. I mean, I didn't look at it as a failure at that time. But people after that word came and were saying, oh, well, you're failing in this area and the building is failing in this area and everything was about a failure. But God had pre-told me, I'm not a failure. You're not a failure. I didn't make failures. That's what he gave me. You're not a failure because he didn't make failures. And I was like, okay, well, I know I'm not a failure. These people are bringing all these papers to show me, to try to prove to me that I failed or that I'm a failure. And it's like, wait a minute, how can you fail? You've only been in the business six months. The business was whatever it was when you got it. You're here to make it better. That's what you're here for. And then I started understanding and it just dawned on me, that's only feedback. And then I pulled out all of the documents all of the penalty paperwork, everything that was there. And I started looking, I said, oh, this tells me I need to do this. Oh, and this other one says, if I don't have this done in a particular time, uh, this is the direction that this is going to go, but this is the answer to it. Every sheet of paper had a direction. Every sheet of paper. And I'm telling you, I had more than two dozen sheets of paper. And each That's one was from a different organization, a different situation, and all of them gave me instruction. And that's when I began to learn and understand there is no failure. There is none. It's only feedback. And I use the illustration of having mail because we all have to mail out something sooner or later. Even if you're sending out an email, it's still mail. If mail is coming in and going out and you're really taking the time to perceive, <laughs> the perception is, is meant to block you. The perception of the word failure is meant to block you. It's meant and to... And why do you think that is? Well, why do you think that is? Number I mean, I one, my opinion. Well, number one, because it keeps people out of certain... Uh, genres of work, of music, of art. Uh, it keeps you. It keeps you out, and they don't have to keep you out. You'll keep yourself out. Exactly. Exactly. Because exactly. we we as black people, and and I'm not getting because we may have any kind of nationality on here. I'm not getting on racism at all. However, when you know who you are, where you are, and when you are from, you start understanding that there are key things that we have to do differently. And you really have to do them differently. Because my facility was in Pasadena, old, old Pasadena, old money. And I was in the midst of predominantly uh, the white culture. And so because of being there, it um, attracted agencies because I'm a black woman owning this huge facility and my floors were so clean, you could literally eat off my floor. There was no smells, but nice fresh smell. And I had to be really particular. I had to be uh, uh, twice as clean. Uh, we had to have things, the structure had to be, you know, impeccable. But that's because every agency that came out to give me um, a document of direction were all, you know, that nationality. And even the, um, even the, the LPs, which comes out from the state, to check and you know to see how things are going were not my skin color. And so I had a lot of things that was going on that was of a jealousy because how can she have this facility and you know I'm only an employee. 
a lot of that uh, came up. But then I asked God how to play the game. And in a dream, he gave me, you need to get the right color ball. Uh, took me about a couple of days, but I started understanding how to interpret that. Because I couldn't be the one that comes to the front door as the owner and administrator. So God sent me a young lady and her husband from Australia. And he happened to be, which nothing really happens because, like you said, the universe will answer. And he was a handyman, very good one. So I hired them both. I hired her as the co-administrator and I hired him as the handyman. So whenever the state came in, whenever different people came in, I would grab the broom and I would sweep while they were talking. So I was always in the room where I could hear. She'd always be in a room where I could be around so I could hear the conversation and hear what they're talking about. And from that time on, I got no more penalties. I got no more write-ups. Every time the write-up came out, it was excellent. But a couple of months before then, when it was me, I had all these documents. But I'm saying this to say it gives you direction. If you could see, if you could change your sight to see that it's feedback and feedback comes with direction. It comes with instruction. It comes with your actual val validity of your dream or your vision. But your vision has to be that all of the instruction that comes no matter how it comes, no matter what it comes from, is only feedback. So no such thing as failure, huh? No such thing as failure. Hmm. God I have to agree failure. with you. I, I, I have to agree with you. You know I'm not a religious person. We've had that conversation in the past, you and I. But um, so I, I'm just going to leave it at, I don't, there's no failure. It's no, we're not. Perception of of failure, and we we've been trained. And, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say exactly. something. I'm gonna say a couple of things. Uh, one is how sad is it that you have to put somebody in your stead in your business in order to not get write ups anymore? That is so ridiculous. In these, you know, you would think in these, you know, in these modern times, right? That is so crazy to me that that is still a part of our of our existence. But, it, but remember, that, you know, unfortunately, it is. So I wanted to say that. And then the second thing I wanted to say real quick is, and then I'll let you uh, 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 continue, is that, you know, it is so... Um, um, funny to me that that you when you were talking about the words because you know there are a lot of words in the English language and I've heard this like a lot of that like even um, uh, like if you listen to a Bible scholar and they'll say well no back in the day that word you know in in um, in Aramaic didn't mean that but when right. they were translated for the third fourth time um, and by the time it got to the English then the the whole meaning was completely flipped, you know. Right. <laughs> and you you're like, so what they what they what they were saying is not that you know this would happen to you. They were saying that you know it would be good if you did X. You know what I mean? But it, by the time right. we got to the English, it was like, oh no, you're gonna be struck down or you know whatever. I'm just you know being silly here. But my my point is is that. It is, it is so imperative, and this is this is for everybody, right? This, this is not just for for one specific grouping of people. If you are not right. in the in the multi multi billionaire class or from from old 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 money, I'm telling you, verbiage that we utilize has been has been weaponized, right? For right. so the verbiage right. that that we you know, this this um ninety nine percent as people like to say that we use 
it has been weaponized against us because it is not the verbiage that people use in the higher echelons. It is not the thought processes that people have in the higher echelons because if we, right, the, the so-called 99% were to understand the words that are coming out of our mouth, then, then you know, oh, my God, it, it would be a revolution. It would literally be a global revolution. People, you know, there's everybody, I mean, I don't give a crap what you think about Kevin Trudeau, but you have to get or just listen to, go on YouTube, and he has a, um, a thing that he used to sell, and it's called uh, Your Wish is Your Command. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. And he talks about all of that stuff in, in Your Wish is Your Command, where he's talking about how, like when he was in, in, the, in one of the secret societies, the Brotherhood, that, you know, they would, they would literally um, talk about their development in terms of the words that they use and what they should be telling themselves as opposed to what they used to tell themselves or what they used to learn. And what's even funnier is the people in the lower echelons of, of these, you know, secret societies, um, they, they don't even know all of that until they start moving up the ranks. You know, like if you're a Mason, you're a basic Mason, you learn something, but you don't really learn any of the real stuff until you get into the higher echelon, and then you, your, vocabulary, your vocabulary changes. Absolutely. Right? You're, you're, you know, and he was talking about, you know, like, like people are, are looking for libraries, you know, or where, where the, where, where is the, the, the Brotherhood's library, where's, you know, the, the Skull and Bones library, where's the, you know, all these different groupings. And he's like, they don't have libraries in the way that you would think. The libraries are in, in these homes of people that have been, where they've been generational in these societies, right? That's the, those are the libraries. He says, you, you'll find these organizations called different things, but you'll find them in China and they have libraries in these homes of very wealthy people that no matter what government comes or goes, whether it's the communist government or some other type of government or, or some dynasty or another dynasty, that those families have re retained their wealth in their position regardless to what changes occur and they have books and libraries that teach and preach different things that you know have you thinking a different type of way because of the words that are being used and right. opposed to the weaponized words that were taught and used every day you know and, and I'm I, I, it's just so funny to me that you had mentioned um that in, in a different country, in Japan, I think you said, you know, emergency means something entirely different, where in this, in this society, in this country that we live in, emergency, you know, brings a panic to a person. Right. You know, right. it, it literally right. elevates your, your blood pressure. When in the, right. Oh, my God, there's an emergency. You know what I'm saying? Um, and right. there's a lot of words like that. And, and it's so... Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Dr. Barbara. I, I, I appreciate that greatly. And, and we have to, the people in this mastermind, we have to, to start, Elliot, thank you for speaking up, um, because what you have said is, is invaluable, right? It's literally invaluable because it, it, you potentially have changed the thought pattern or the thought process uh, I know you've, you've helped me, you're helping me change mine. I'm already in process, but you know it takes a while, right? So I'm already in process, but by you saying what you said has helped me, and I'm hoping that it's also helping to change the mindset or the mentality of someone else on this call now and someone in the future that listens to this recording later. So thank you for that greatly. So May do you I have anything else that you want to add? Yes, um, you were saying about <laughs> you were saying about how I had to get somebody else to be in front, but you have to remember, uh, I looked at it as putting a team together, like you were saying about make sure that you get your team and people that are set up. So her and her husband were my first frontline team, and then my middle team were uh, some of my nurses 
And absolutely my doctors, I had two particular doctors um, that I worked with all the time. And they were, you know, it was like, you know, the old saying, scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. And that was at that season of time. However, there was money exchanged. It wasn't money exchanged like um, from hand to hand. But the documentation that we put together, that was the financial uh, currency that was flowing back and forth. And uh, one other thing I want to say is that I'm going to give you another word. And since I've been in the legal community and doing, you know, the stuff I do um, in the legal community now, uh, when I started learning some of the things that where they where they came from the origin, and um, everybody that's on the line, whenever you have five or ten minutes, start looking at origins of words. And I say this because. Uh, I'm going to give you one thing and it's going to blow your mind on what it really means. And you can understand why words were torn apart and put in symbols and put in um, letters because it keeps you from actually knowing where it exists. So I'm going to say this word. I don't mean to offend anybody. I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. But the word. <laughs> oh my god uh it, first i'm going to say what it is it's forensics under corporate knowledge okay forens forensics under corporate knowledge f-u-c-k really that's what it is now that I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have to look that up because that's crazy to me. Forensic under corporate knowledge. So I, you know, I cuss. So thought is forensic under corporate knowledge. Right. That is crazy. The the word is not, because because if you actually look at the word, what does really the word mean? And, yeah, it, mean? I, it just all I knew it and I have known it to be is just a derogatory word. It, you exactly. know, uh, put, put, put out to be a derogatory word. Exactly. Um, you know, when once again, trained, trained, key to to think of it as a derogatory word. And um, and the truth of the matter is, uh, you know, like most things, it is probably not. Um, you know, it, it, it's true intent. Is hidden for 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 a lot of reasons. For, I'm for, sure. for all for mm. all sorts and purposes to keep you on the plantation, and so Absolutely. I was telling I was telling one of our board members I was saying that the chains are no longer where they're visible. They're unvisible. Yeah, but, you know that, that's the thing. It's for, it's it's you know. I've had this conversation with many of people that are not black, you know what I mean? And they're not of color, you know? And, and you know, the conversation is that you, they are, you know, people forget. Let me, let me back up here. People forget that during the time of, of slavery in this country, you know, um, especially in the beginning, there were, there were a ton I don't know the exact numbers, but you know, all across the country where they where they had enslaved, um, uh, you know, black folks, there were a ton of enslaved white folks, but they just referred to them as indentured, um, because back then, you know, people would bring you from England, from Scotland, from wherever. And if they paid your fare to get here to the U.S., um, or you owed somebody money back in England or Scotland or one of the you know um, other countries that are found their way under the United Kingdom, uh, if you owed somebody money, they could buy your debt and they bring you here and you work. And the difference was right. that you would be able to work your debt off after about six to ten years. And and then subsequently, you know, be a free man. But you know, people have to understand that 
they, those people, those indentured, you know, so-called indentured people, you know, they were in bondage just like like the like the slaves were that were brought here from from Africa and the slaves that were and the slaves that were turned into slaves from the Africans that were already here before colonial power came here. Um, right. And and so the long story short is is that you know with the way things are globally, it is just a new form of slavery and verbiage also keeps us, you know, keeps people enslaved. You know, so, you know, <laughs> whether you are Asian, whether you are um, uh, Caucasian, whether you are um, um, African, whether you are um, um, Hispanic, or I, I don't even like using that term, uh, whether you are, are, are Mexican or South American or some other place where the colonial Spanish powers um, landed, whether you are any of those things um, or, you know, referred to as indigenous Indian, you're still enslaved. It's just, it's just you're enslaved in a, in a different way, in an economic manner, and that's why we are taught to think and believe the way we're taught to think and believe. We're taught to think and believe that, you know, that, that you are a failure, getting back to that again, because it's so important, and you are far from it. You are just a, a, you are a student of life. You know, you are, you are, are, are waiting for that letter, as Dr. Barber says. Um, and, and so, I, I hope, you know, listen, y'all, I'm hoping you're getting something from this, because it's, it's really, really powerful, because no matter where you're at right here, right now, this very second in time, um, this very second in your life, I'm telling you, you know, you can start changing it for the better by start thinking your way through the process and understand that when you, when you're waiting on that letter to find out what changes you need to make, as Dr. Barbara was explaining, um, it's not failure. It's just simply saying there are corrections that you need to make. That's it. Anything else before we get off the That's call? It. That's All right. right. Well, thank you so very much for your insight. It's it's greatly appreciated. And for everybody that's on this call, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And and this is I want to say that this is our call, y'all. You know, I might be the host of the call, but this is our call, not my call. So please feel free to interject um, and let's help our mastermind community. Um, let's help us all grow. Let's help us all succeed. Thank you so very much, everybody. I, I really appreciate you. Um, take care. Thank you, and Thank you again. All right, thank you, thank you. All right, for everybody on the call, thank you, thank you, and, and goodbye. Have an awesome, awesome, and prosperous day. Thank you. Bye-bye.